What's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to go ahead and share with you a handful of amazing tips and tricks as well as hidden features that you have to enable if this is your first time using the Flip 7. So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the best settings to enable to unlock some amazing abilities such as the ability to actually watch YouTube videos right here on your lock page and so much more. And of course, timestamps and everything will be in the video description down below for your pleasure. Let's get started. Starting off is how I'm able to actually watch my YouTube videos as well as reply to text messages and basically use full native apps right here on this display. In order to accomplish this, we need to exit out of here and you need to go into your apps and look for the Samsung Store app. It basically looks like this app. Hit accept and you wanna go ahead and type in good luck and then just go ahead and install this app. And once you install this, hit open and you'll be brought to this page. And what you gotta do is, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this to demonstrate a fresh install, how that works. So there we go. I uninstalled the app so I can give you a fresh installation guide. And by going down this long list, look for something that says Multistar, this icon right here. Allow it to install on your Samsung device and click on it once it's installed. Make sure it's enabled. And where it says, I love Galaxy Foldables, click on it right here. Click on Launch Widget and from here, these are all the native apps you have installed on your device. So you could do everything from like everything like the Google Chrome, eBay if you like. But the important ones are primarily a social media platform of your choice, YouTube, or any other streaming platforms, even Amazon, ChatGPT possibly. And once you're satisfied, on top where it says enable launcher widget, and you want to go ahead and go down until you find Multistar. From here, make sure you add the correct widget page. Rearrange it to your own personal preference. I like to leave mine on the very top. You can also make a version for your games too. You could play mobile games on the front screen if you like to as well. But once you're satisfied, just hit the back arrow, close your device, go ahead and unlock it. And if you swipe to the next widget page, you have immediate access to all your full native apps right here. You can also change between the different viewing formats too. That's what this little tool down here is. And you also have the ability to swipe up to close and you still have the ability to access control center as well as your brightness slider and all that good stuff. Really amazing stuff. The next thing I like to go ahead and go over is gesture controls. Again, a swipe up to the top will allow you to quickly access the app switch menu, which allows you to go between the previously open app and the most recently open app. You can also do this to slide between the different apps as well. And of course you could do like a swipe up to force close the app. But if you like to reverse back to the classic Android gestures, you're always able to do that by simply going into your settings and from here go into display and go down until you find navigation. Right here in the navigation bar, select this and here so we can switch between button layout gestures if you want physical buttons down here or the swipe gesture. Personal preference, I like the swipe gesture in my opinion. It's much more easier to get the hang of things and it gives you access to a larger screen too. But another amazing tool you can find in the display tab is I highly recommend enabling extra brightness because this new phone, the new Flip 7s can take advantage of a brighter knit brightness than there before. Ideal for like outdoor situation because by having this extra brightness enabled, notice this orange slider. If you're outdoors and you need to manually like increase the brightness of your display, it will notify you right there of an orange icon letting you know you are at max nit brightness and this thing can go up to 2600 nits which is perfect for outdoor sunny days. Now when it comes to multitasking this large 6.9 inch display is amazing as there's plenty of real estate space for two apps to be open at the same time and the most easiest way to multitask is by simply by simply just going in and launching the app and then fold the phone and you'll see this little faux gesture down here, which is kind of funny. You can click and drag it and rearrange it to your own personal preference. Tap on it. It'll give you access to like a trackpad, almost like a computer. You can scroll as well. But this first icon was the box that looks like a square Pokeball. Click on it right here. It'll launch your most recently open apps and you can select it. You can have two windows open at once. So you can literally multitask just like this. And if you like additional tools, maybe swap out a different app. You can always just select right here. And then let's go ahead and open up ChatGPT as an example. Boom. Tap again. You can enter full screen mode. You can also multitask by bringing down the edge panel right here and click on like the web browser. Or you can click and drag the icon like so. So now we have two web browsers at the same time. And if you like to swap the two, the three dots in the middle, you can hit the arrow and it will swap the two apps like so. 
amazing stuff right here. Now, real quick, guys, if you could kindly take two seconds and hit that like button and like. Truly appreciate those because those strongly support the channel and allow the channel to be continue to be powered by you guys, the viewers, which is why you don't see integrated brands for like a sponsorship, taking like a minute or two off your time telling you to subscribe to something that's not really irrelevant to the content. So massive thank you to those that continue to support the channel by just simply hitting that like button. Really does mean a lot. Let's carry on. Another great way you can multitask is by taking two fingers and swiping up. This will also enter split screen mode this way as well. You have access to your previously open apps or your most used apps down here as well. And if you like to enable this two finger swipe up, which I think it's easier than folding it, quickly go into your device settings and go down into advanced features right in here. And where it says multi window, select that tab and make sure you have swipe for split screen. That's the two finger swipe up to split screen and the swipe for pop-up view by long holding on like on a corner. It's kind of difficult to do, but you'll get used to it. You could adjust the size of the window like this. Another great way to multitask like this as well. So free to use features right here that allows you to use multitasking to the next level when it comes to utilizing the larger screen on the Flip 7. But exiting out of here, I do want to go ahead and go slightly more in depth in the display because in the display tab, this is where you can find that edge tool I was showing you. This should be enabled by default. But where it says edge panel, that's what this little tab right here is. If you disable it, it will go away. But by enabling this edge feature, it will give you quick access to some unique AI tools like the AI drawing and interpreter, which allows you to actually translate two different languages. But additionally, there's a unique feature about this Galaxy app. You see, right now I have it in Spanish and English. If we fold our device and you select this little preview window over here, on the opposite side, it will translate the language from English to Spanish. So if we're talking to somebody in Spanish, on our side, we'll see it translated to English. And in my experience, it works extremely well. And this is all utilizing AI. And if you select the drop down menu, you have everything from English, Korean, and you could add so much more, even Chinese, Japanese, Polish, Russia. Other cool things you could do in this edge panel, if you tap the gear icon right here before it goes away, you can enable the apps clipboards, reminders, people, compass, weather, all right here as well. So if we enable the panel, you can toggle between the different pages by just simply doing a swipe. Now, when it comes to the camera app, the camera app is quite incredible too, as it is also packed with a lot of unique features. But the first thing you need to understand, if you want motion pictures, whenever you take a photo to feature like a motion playback, kind of like what Apple does, you could just enable that play YouTube icon looking thing. And this will unlock the ability to do that. And you can select cool things like boomerang, slow motion. But additionally, back in the camera app, by default, it will be selected a 12 megapixel camera. If you select 50, this is how you could utilize the maximum amount of pixels you could take a picture of, giving you a higher quality image, especially in low light situation. But if you're trying to take a selfie or frame somebody in subject, you could tap this top corner button over here. This will enable the cover cover screen on which will you be basically a, a viewfinder for the person you're trying to take a photo of. Great for selfies if you're trying to utilize the best camera, not the front camera right here, the best back cameras. You can utilize the ultra wide as well as the 50 megapixel camera by doing this. And if we switch to video and you fold it, it'll switch to a handheld cam mode, which allows you to hit record from here. And you can also slide to zoom in or zoom out just by having the phone folded. It's kind of cool. Now let's go ahead and end recording because another cool thing I like to show you is whenever you have camera mode enabled, you have a photo like so. If you flip the camera, you could do hand gestures by putting your paw out. It'll start like a counter and it'll either take a photo or a video. So you can literally, in theory, just place this down and put your hand out and it'll just take a photo like so. A lot of amazing stuff here. Now, when it comes to customization, this phone is extremely customizable. My most favorite feature is the ability to create custom wallpapers. You see, by going back to your phone settings, by tapping the gear icon above here, I find that to be faster. And you go into wallpaper and style. Here you have a variety of different styles to choose from if you hit change wallpaper. But on the very bottom, you can create using AI. And here you have the selection between generate for lock page or home page or lock screen only. It also does support ambient too. So here's one right here. 
And this one's pretty unique because you could use existing photos. So if you have pets or subjects that you like to include, you could utilize AI to change the environment around them. So here's my dog as an example. If we select play, it's going to generate like the current climate condition. So right now it's, uh, well, it's saying it's raining, even though it's not raining, but it's using an existing photo to make it rain, snow, based off the current weather. And it does all this utilizing AI, which is kind of cool. But the one that I personally want to show you is starting from scratch. When you hit generate, you create something new based on existing suggestions. But if we hit terrain as an example, and we want this to be a forest instead. And then shades of silver. I want to be shades of blue since this phone is blue. Hit generate. And just like that, we have a couple of selections to choose from. And we can hit save and next. Hit done. And that is how we generated a wallpaper from scratch. And the other cool way to customize your device is if you want to remove the labels from the apps to give you a clearer layout, super easy to do so. Just long hold and tap settings for down here in the bottom where it says app label. That's where you go in and then disable that if you want them to be dislabeled. You can also change the app size from here as well as you have a little slider and it shows you a preview on how that will look like. If you like to change the home page grid size, you can also change it too if you want to fit more apps in a single page. But I personally prefer fitting more in a larger screen like this. So personal preference, good customization abilities. You can also change the grid for the folder here as well. But those are the settings I selected to give my phone a nice cleaner home screen layout. Now when it comes to organizing apps, you can always click and drag apps to the folder as an example. So I'm just going to click and drag, drag this one just for the video demonstration purposes and that one. That's how I click and drag it. You can also change the color of the apps now as well, the app folders. Select the color. And then just click anywhere else. And that's how you can change the color of the folders. If you like to make the folder icons a little larger, you can also enlarge as well so you can see it a lot better. If you have small apps in a folder like I do right here. So it's kind of cool. If you like to add more, you can always just tap the plus and add more apps instead of clicking and dragging. Pretty useful stuff. And, and of course, you can always tap on the name to rename it as well. Now, when it comes to tips and tricks, if you're running out of battery, if you'd like to preserve more battery life out of your device, by simply folding the screen, I notice I'm able to get an hour more battery life. So if I have some apps in that widget page that we created earlier, like all I use is like Messenger or just go on YouTube and watch a couple of YouTube videos, by simply just viewing my content off this screen right here, I notice I'm able to easily give myself an additional hour of battery life. And of course, you can always full screen the video this way as well. And you're not crippled too if you're just using the front screen of your display because you still have access to amazing tools such as a flashlight if you need to. You can always just do that to toggle it. It's not limited at all. So that's a cool little trick right there if you like to save battery life. Just use this main screen more and you'll easily be able to achieve another hour of battery life under a single charge. And of course, if you really want to save battery life, you can disable the always on display, but that, that one's optional. I personally never notice a massive battery improvement by having that enabled or disabled. Now, since we are in a subject of control center, the control center is also customizable as well with some amazing tools. For instance, for instance, if we swipe from the top right, you have access to your control center, right? But if you like to reverse that in case you are left-handed, you can always tap the pencil icon like I did earlier, tap panel control, and here is where you could quickly select the left side if you want your left side to be your panel control for your control center. Or you could do it all together. By having it all together, and we exit out of here, now if I swipe down, it will always give me access to control center as well as my notifications down here in the bottom. But regardless on what route you decided to go with, this is fully customizable by simply tapping the pencil icon. You can rearrange these to your own personal preference. You can also enlarge the control center if you like to be larger whenever you bring that down. But by hitting edit, you can always like rearrange your control center icons and rearrange them if you want your favorite ones to always be on top. And you also have access to a unique tool ones down here as well if you want extra dim as an example. So definitely do take the time to peruse and check out all these amazing control center tools that we have here. But three of my favorite ones has to be hands down the power sharing. By enabling wireless power sharing, you can just simply just fill your device like so, flip it upside down and grab the device you're trying to charge and just place it on the phone and it will immediately start charging. 
Another powerful one is probably kids mode. After you set that up, you can actually set it so you could just enable kids mode and it will lock them in one app. This way they don't have access to all your other apps that you have on your primary device. And then another powerful one is uh, quick share, which allows you to basically like quickly share files from one Android device to the other. You could wirelessly send photos, videos like you can on iPhones. Now for some bonus ones. If you have a internet data cap, I highly recommend going to your settings and go into the connection tab. And then in here, scroll down so you can find billing cycle and data warning. From the very bottom, here you can select it so it gives you a warning if you reach a certain data amount. But what I like to do is set a data limit. So right now I have set my data limit to 5 gigs because that's what this plan is set for. And I don't want to be overcharged. So by enabling this and then setting the data limit, now when I ever go over 5 gigs, I close a monitor it right here, but it will, it will immediately cut the data limit, preventing me from being overcharged. And then another thing you could do in the settings as a nice little bonus, if you ever have any questions or things you'd like to adjust, on the search bar in settings, you can always just talk to it like a normal human being because this is AI powered. So if you like to do something like, as an example, let's say I want to go ahead and change my ringtone. So now if you select this microphone, change ringtone. It got that last bit, but it took us to the ringtone section. So anything you're trying to adjust on your phone, you can just talk to it. It'll quickly take you to the setting that you're trying to get to, to adjust certain things. Another thing you could do is uh, this annoying power button. By default, if you long hold, it doesn't really do anything. It just activates AI. If you like to reverse it, you can always ask Gemini, change power button. It'll take us to the advanced feature where you could tap on side button. You can change the default Google Assistant to the power off menu. So now by selecting that, if we long hold, it'll take us to the power off menu. And another added, added bonus. This is for those that use the Google Chrome. By simply long holding the search bar, you can move the bar from the top or to the bottom. And there you guys have it. Those are all the cool tips and tricks as well as some hidden features of everything you need to know to really get the most out of your device. Let me know in the comment section which one of these features was your personal favorite. And if you have something of your own you'd like to share with the rest of us, feel free to comment down below for a chance to be pinned on a top comment of this comment section. Anyways, thank you once again for watching. If you wish to watch more, I highly recommend checking out this video over there where I highlight all the cool hidden features and some tips and tricks, but this time, for the Galaxy Ultra watch. Definitely do check out that video over there. Thank you so much for watching.